All right, that sucked. That was bad. This is the wrap-up show. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get at least 150 likes on tonight's episode talking about this boring, dreadful, no-life loss to the Toronto Blue Jays 5-1. to one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> that was not good at all. The Padres have now scored one run in their last 20 innings play, dating back to Tuesday, where they scored two runs versus the Brewers in the eighth inning. Um, and since then, they have scored one run. This is the type of stuff that you kind of fear with this team. They have these highs that are high. And then they have just like really low lows. And this team definitely is a team built that if they go into a slump, it could look ugly. And that's what we're seeing right now. The last two games, you know, getting shut out on Thursday morning. And then you score one run thanks to only a Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, home run tonight. But we'll get into it. Um, but make your way in here. Um, if you want to send in a super chat, uh, totally, totally welcome. Uh, we'll get all the super chats in the show. Um, again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, let's get to at least 150 plus likes on tonight's show. It was just a bad game overall pitching poorly. Defense was not good. Um, the hitting just sucked. It, it just all in all, it just felt like a giant fat clunker. Only five hits in the game. Um, so yeah, not great. Not great at all. Hold on a second here. Interesting. John will be back on Sunday. John will be back on Sunday. Um, we can just blame this loss on John 100%. This is all John's fault. And uh, yeah, I blame John for this loss. But getting into it here, uh, Matt Waldron tonight, Got lit up in the first couple innings there. Gave up five runs, but then he bounced back nicely. He went four and two thirds. I think at one time he retired. I don't know how many retired in a row at one point, but I mean, you start the game off and Justin freaking Turner hits that home run. And you're like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> right. Well, the guy, guys that has tortured the Padres over his career. And uh, that second inning was not pretty. There was a moment in that second inning. I think it was, let me see here what happened. But I know Xander Bogarts was all over tonight's loss and not in a good way. We'll get to Xander Bogarts coming up here in a bit. But in that second inning where Matt Waldron gave up four runs, you had. A Varsho pop up, a Jansen double, Biggio walk. So, you know, I have runners on first and second with one out. Isaiah Kinner Falefa, say that three times fast, pops out to Xander. All right. So now I have two outs in the inning. Kiermeyer comes up, hits that double, two score. It's now 3 1. 3-1, not bad. Or no, sorry, was it 3 nothing? I think it was 3 nothing. Excuse me, sorry. 3 nothing at that point. Tatis' home run was in the bottom of the third inning. But it's 3 nothing with two outs. Little dribbler to Xander. He double clutches, okay, and everybody's safe. Um, <laughs> My guy... We we cannot keep having errors that turn into runs. How many times this year has either Xander or Kim 
have errors that turned into to directly turn into runs following those errors. Feels like a lot. So Xander double clutches. Okay. They ruled it a single. I I mean, I, in the moment it felt like he double clutched. He had an opportunity to get Bo Bichette there, but um, Bo Bichette's fast. Not say, I mean, he might have beaten it out, but it was not a clean uh, transfer by Xander at all. It just looked messy. Um, wasn't an error, but still, it felt like type a type of error. And then you get the Vladdy single there. Now it's four one or four nothing. And then again, Justin Turner comes up. He singles in another run. Floodgates are open. Uh, probably should have ended that inning three nothing, but you know because Xander couldn't have a night, a good transfer and because it, 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 I mean, maybe the ball was just hit perfectly. I don't really know. I, I, I watched it a couple times back and I'm like, I don't know if, if, if he would have beaten it out, but still um, after that five, nothing. And you feel like, okay, here we go. Um, Xander had a really bad game again. No one had a really good game. Tatis had that home run. It was nice. Jackson Merrill had that double. That was cool, you know, for his birthday. But, you know, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position tonight. Not much action on the action on the base pass. Only five hits. Um, besides the, uh, the first two innings of this game, I thought the Padres pitching was really good. Cosgrove, who I found out his nickname is Grover. Okay. Uh, Kolick, Morahone, and Gillespie, uh, Gillespie. They were they were they were really good. Um. So yeah, it was just a clunker of a game. I, I really know what else to say other than this team, how it's built, will have games like this, and they could potentially have stretches like this where they go into some big time funks offensively. Jerkson Profar is not going to be, be hitting, you know, 300 all season long with an 800 plus OPS. Jackson Merrill, he was he was okay tonight, had that double, but he's not going to hit 333 for the entire season. When you have those two guys that have been kind of carrying the load here offensively, not performing games, and then guys like Xander who just can't have anything go right for him right now. You know, the, the ball he hit in the first inning was actually a hard hit ball. It was a rocket. And it was a great catch of the wall. <laughs> you know, like, what are you going to do about that? But overall, you're going to get, you're going to get nights like this with this team because of the, of the lineup. You're probably going to get stretches like this with this team because of this lineup. And it's going to be very frustrating. It's going to it's going to make you want to pull your hair out. It just is. Higashioka's in there to start. I think he was in there just because of um, Waldron and his knuckleball. But yeah, overall, I, I uh, <laughs> not much to say after this loss, really. Now, Xander Bogarts. <laughs> okay. You guys want me to go off on Xander Bogarts or what? I feel like people do. I feel like this is a moment where it's like, okay, enough's enough. Changes have to be made. Do you continue want to do you, do you continuously want to put him out there to go over like he did tonight? And oh, by the way, have three strikeouts in the in the process? I would expect a change um, either tomorrow or or later in the weekend if 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 they have been already talking about it, which it seems like they have, then I would expect some change uh, in this lineup. I, I you know, Shilty is very married to how this lineup has been this year with uh, Bogey, Toddy, Crone Zone, um, Manny, Pro, Kim, like. In, maybe flip Kim and Profar there. Kimmy, my bad. But overall, uh, the top four of this lineup with Bogarts, Tatis, Cronorth, and Machado have been pretty much the same all year long, except for that Saturday 
in LA when um, they gave Bogarts a day off and uh, Jackson Merrill hit lead off for them. So I would expect after the last two games and just the sheer slump that he's in to take him out of that leadoff spot and switch it up in some way or form. If it's not tomorrow, it's coming. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, okay, we're going to continue to roll this lineup out. But after this weekend, if, you know, you put an, put together like a, 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 a situation where you go like one for 12 in the series or, 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 you know, one for 10 with a couple walks here and there, like, it's probably going to be time to say, look, I don't think the leadoff spot's doing you any good right now. We need to get you going. We need to find you a spot where um, you feel comfortable. We need to get someone else in the top of the lineup. This is not something where we're like demoting you. We're just moving you around in the order. He's still going to be out there. He's still going to be playing. <laughs> As James says, man, if you got that standing ovation, things would have been totally different. I'm just happy that tonight, um, second, you know, Padres fans that were crying about this on social media weren't so embarrassed that they would have had to contemplate not being a fan anymore. I'm just, I'm really happy that a potential, you know, applauding of Xander Bogarts before his first at bat didn't really happen because if it did happen, I'm afraid that a lot of Padres fans would be, would have been so embarrassed that I don't even know if they would have been fans anymore. I don't even know if they would have want to watch this team anymore. I don't even know if they can go out in public with their Padres gear on anymore. If that standing ovation did happen. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the horror of having to watch this team? after potentially a bunch of people stood up and gave Xander an encouragement round of applause before his first at bat? Dude, could you imagine? Huh. Crazy. Again, did I think there was going to be a standing ovation tonight for Xander Bogarts before his first at bat? No, I did not. I did not. I wasn't sitting there on my edge of the couch thinking that something was going to happen. The only thing that happened was a Twitter storm that got a bunch of people riled up and and you know contemplating their fandom if they're they're going to remain a fan of this team because they would have been so embarrassed, so embarrassed. But enough of that. It's in the past. I don't care if people gave him a standing ovation. I don't care about that. What I care about is his play on the field. And again, over for tonight, three strikeouts. Did they lose this game because of Xander Bogarts? No, they did not. All right. This is this is a um team-wide lineup issue that they're in a little bit of a slump. The last two games not been great. Before that, this offense was clicking. See right here, it said Schultz said in his press conference that he wasn't moving Xander. Okay, that's fine. But there will become a time, and there will be a time if he continues to put up a bunch of offers or a bunch of, you know, one for fours with a soft single that doesn't amount to anything and, and have a bunch of, like, there will come a time, and they're talking about it where he has moved off of the leadoff spot. It's, it's going to happen if he does not turn it around here. If he continues to slump, he will be moved, plain and simple. They might give him just the rest of the series. They might give him longer. They might give him another week. They might give him till the end of the month. Who knows? But at some point in time, there will be a day if he continues to slump, like he is right now, where they will move him off the leadoff spot. And then the discussion will be, who do we put in that spot if that discussion hasn't already taken place? Kevin AC and Dennis Lynn, like, you know, they say that, look, these conversations are being, ha are being had. They're not just turning a blind eye to this. They're not just sitting there saying, that's nah, fine. He's going to get his numbers. It's okay. Nah, he'll turn it around. No, they're talking about it. 
So as he, rem- you know, Schulte is the ultimate player's manager. That's fu- That's great. I-, I am kind of like more of the, I tell you how it is type of guy. Um, and Xander's the same way. He's he he has told the media like, yeah, I suck right now. I am trash. Those are his words, not mine. And um, he knows. They know. We know. Everybody knows. He is in a massive slump. And when it's your leadoff hitter, it's kind of hard to hide that, right? It's kind of hard to hide a guy hitting 190 with almost a sub 500 OPS and put him in your leadoff spot and have it not be a glaring it, like you know, issue with the team. So it it will happen. It's just a matter of um, when and um, if he does not turn it around. If he turns it around, say the next couple games, he puts up some big numbers, he gets a couple hits, um, then they're going to keep him there. But if for the rest of this series you see a couple more offers, then yeah, I would suspect the you know the time would will be coming for sure. But other than Xander, uh, the rest of the lineup, the lineup didn't do much either. You know, you had an offer tonight from Manny Machado. You had Cronenworth just with, uh, I believe, just a single. Tatis had a six home run of the year. I think he's on pace for like forty five plus. Jerson Profar had a couple of good at-bats. I mean, they did have some good at-bats tonight. I'm not saying that they didn't. But 14 strikeouts, two, only two walks. I think last, uh, what was it? No, Sunday versus the Dodgers. Didn't they have 14 walks in that game? It was like a Padres franchise record. So they're capable of it. But tonight just wasn't it. Just wasn't it. You got nothing from Tyler Wade. He had an opportunity there in, I believe, um, after Merrill's double, you had runners on second and third. And what inning was that? That was that was the second inning. You're right. That was the second inning. So Profar leads the inning off with a single. Hassan Kim strikes out. Jackson Merrill doubles. Runners at second and third with one out. You got to get a run home in that situation. Okay. You're down five, nothing. You got to get at least a run across the board. Tyler Wade flies out. Kyle Higashioka strikes out swinging. That's what you're going to get when you have those two guys, at the bottom of the order that, you know, with this lineup, you are going to get days like this and you are potentially going to get stretches like this. Is how it is. I, I think if people are sitting here tonight saying that Matt Waldron was the issue, I would have to disagree with that. Matt Waldron was a issue tonight. Matt Waldron did not pitch well in the first two innings. Okay. But when you are given zero run support, always makes it harder. Now, when you're down five nothing, um, heading to the third inning, and your your offense is already, you know, n- kind of cold here, then yeah, it just makes it that much harder. The Diamondbacks are up seventeen to one on the Giants in the ninth inning. <laughs> what? Ooh, that was a Blake Snell start too. Yucky. So tonight, you bottle it up and you throw it as far in the ocean as you possibly can. It's one of those nights. <sighs> Pull this up here. Uh, we would not be able to do this. And by we, I mean me tonight. John, who knows? But. Mark Nimitz, our title sponsor of the wrap-up show. Uh, he's been with us since the beginning. 
He's a lifelong Padres fan. I'm sure tonight's loss it, uh, definitely sucked for him, <laughs> sucked for everybody. Um, but if you need insurance and you have insurance needs, Mark Nimitz is your guy. Auto, home, life, renter's insurance, any type of insurance needs that you have, contact Mark Nimitz. His email address is on the ticker below, mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap-up show sent you. No, they're not signing Bauer. No, they're not signing Urias. Not happening. Next question. Um, up until this point, 11 and 11. <laughs> Sign on. I th the, you, what I'm trying to say, you take it. Is it looked great at times? Yeah, it has. Has it looked shitty at times? Oh, yeah, it has. But I think with how this roster is, I mean, you already have an injury to your rotation with you, Darvish, going on the 15-day IL, all right? You have one of your superstar players, guy making, you know, 20-plus million a year, having a absolutely dreadful start to the season. When... We came into this year saying the superstars are going to have to perform if this team is going to win and if this team is going to make the postseason. Plain and simple. I think Tatis, you can say he's performing like a superstar. Manny Machado, he's been better of late, but those numbers, you'd like to see them be better. And Bogarts has been just god awful. So even with that, even with like, of your three of the big three, you have one and a half, right? Performing well. And the half is Manny because he's gotten better and hot as of late, but overall it's still not like the greatest start in the world. It's kind of just like an average start. Um, so with that and the pitching with you Darvish down on the IL now. And you told me they're 11 and 11, and they've scored a bunch of runs overall this year so far. I would, st I think a lot of people would take it. If you told me, hey, 22 game mark, that Friday night versus the Blue Jays, after that game, they're 11 and 11. Would you take it? I think I would. I honestly think I would because the alternative to me could have been a lot worse. They could, I mean, look at the Giants right now. If we were doing a Giants wrap-up show, we'd be losing our freaking minds every night. I think they have one home run at home. <laughs> the Giants do. <laughs> That's god-awful. And Blake Snell is a train wreck. Hmm, who saw that coming? Uh, like, everybody? No wonder he didn't get a big contract. See? Baseball people are smart. <laughs> but 11-11 and 11 at the 22-game mark. The hope is you win the next two, great. You win the series, you forget about tonight. Tonight means absolutely nothing if you win the next two games. You head off to Colorado, you're 13 and 11, great. Love it. Um, but 11 and 11, I, I think I would take it. What do you guys think in the chat? If I told you the start of the year, 22 games in, this team's 11 and 11, and they scored a bunch of runs. I think they're top either one or two or three in baseball and runs scored. They might be lower than that right now because they've gone scoreless in their last 20 innings. But all things being considered, Xander sucking. Darvish now on the IL. Manny off to an average start. Is, an, is 11 and 11 something that I think people would take. I, I say yes. I say yes. What do you guys think? Would you take the 11-11 right now? This guy's not falling. This guy's not falling. Not even close. But the trends of this team, it feels like it's a, just like a roll. Like, like there's a very high trend where they could score a bunch of runs and then with the players on this team that could go cold. 
you're going to get nights like this. Yeah, Margie, I'm, I think I'm with you. I think I'd take 20 and 20 right now at the 40 game mark. 11 and 11 is mid, big poppy smash. <laughs> it's the definition of mid because you're 500. <laughs> right? What's the, def what's the definition of mid? Average. Joe says he's happy with 11 and 11. They're not signing Bauer. Stop. So uh, 11 and 11, it's not the end of the world. It's not the greatest thing in the world. But um, I don't think anybody expected them to be out to like a 15 and 8 start. Right? Or 15 and, what is it, 21? 15 and 7 start. That equals 22. My bad. 15 and 7. Right? Yeah, 22. I mean, that'd been great. That'd been like dream scenario. But I think where they're at right now is pretty in line with realistic expectations for this team so far. That's how I see it. I, I see it as they're going to have to make up, hey, you know, once they maybe add a piece to this team, maybe it's Donovan Solano. Who knows? Or maybe it's the trade deadline. Who knows? But right now, they're in a tough stretch. Their next off day isn't for a while, okay? Their next off day is not until May 2nd. They have a stretch of games here without an off day for the next two weeks. Um, hell, at the end of the month, you know, being 500, I said... I would I, I want to see this team get out to a good start, be a couple games over 500. I think that'd be very beneficial for them at the end of the first month. But again, if they're 500 at the end of the month, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, so right now, State of the Padres, it feels, yeah, T. Kelly says 500 at this point. Pull this up here. 500 at this point is acceptable, but I feel like they could have uh, some roster upgrades by spending just a bit more money on bench pieces. Yes, that's what we were talking about all offseason, and that's what I was fearing the most is the depth of this team. Their bench is awful. Point blank, end of story. I don't care what anybody says. When you have the best players in the lineup, when you put Campy in the lineup, okay, their bench is awful. It just is. Um, there's no way around it. The depth is a concern. So when you have those issues, you are going to get stretches like this where they can't score any runs. When you have other guys going in the lineup, pinch hitting in, in big spots, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I see a lot of people in the chat right now upset with Kyle Higashioka. I mean, it's he's a backup catcher. Would you rather have Brett Sullivan out there? You know, I, again, would Campisano have made a difference tonight in the lineup? Maybe, but again, I, I'm not going to sit here and be like it's the fault. It's the the backup catcher's fault. Could they upgrade? Yes, they could. You can upgrade every position on the bench, <laughs> but it's about who can they upgrade him with. I think in the near future, after Donovan, Donovan Solano gets enough at bats in the minors, he is going to be at the big league level like right away. Tyler Wadey, bye bye. That's how I see it. Um, let's get to a super here. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. Uh, B team bullpen looked half decent. Yeah, they did. I said that you know besides those first two innings, the Padres had really good pitching the rest of the way. You know, Matt Waldron didn't get, like, lit up that home run in the first inning by Justin Turner. Justin Turner just kills the Padres. Anytime he plays the Padres, he just murders this team. So that was expected. And when you're facing a knuckleball pitcher, if he's not on, it's it's gonna, not going to look great, <laughs> you know? Um, There was a couple weird, you know, a couple weird moments in that second inning, like we talked about, the Xander Bogarts play. 
if he do- doesn't double clutch there, does he get Biggio out at first and then the inning's over and they're only down three no- three nothing? But because Xander double clutched or whatever the case may be and happened there, you know, runners were safe at the corners and it led to two more runs. It was considered a hit, kind of, in my opinion, soft because, um, I mean, I don't think Xander fielded that cleanly. Maybe I didn't see it correctly, but from when I watched it, it did not feel like Xander cl- fielded that cleanly. And because he didn't field it cleanly, it led to two runs. But, you know, going back to your super there, like Cosgrove, Grovey, Kolick, Morahone, and uh, Gillespie, they pitched really well. Really well. Seven strikeouts, no walks, no, no runs given up, four hits. Bullpen's been solid. Bullpen gave them the chance. You know, that's, that's the role of the bullpen. When you go down by a bunch of runs like that, hold the line. They held the line. Just the offense couldn't get shit done today. Couldn't get anything done. All right, guys. Um, I want to thank our sponsors at Aura, www.ora.organic. Uh, if you want to live that healthy lifestyle that you've been craving, Aura is the place to go. They have everything you need to live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, they have probiotics. They have sleep pills. They have pre-workouts. They have fish oils. All of it. Go there right now, www.ora.organic. It's the cleanest healthiest supplements on the market. If you're thinking, man, I want to get healthy for summer and I want to look my best for summertime. Guess what? Go to Aura, pick up some supplements um, and it'll just become a part of your everyday lifestyle. And that's the great part. Like the probiotics, John takes every day. I have the pre-workouts. I also have the protein powders. You know, like it's just a part of my everyday life and it could be a part of your everyday life too. www.ora.organic. Go over there right now, pick up some stuff and you will thank us later. Um, all right, hold on here. Let me just, nope, nope, nope. You're an idiot. You're an idiot, Jim. There we go. Um, thanks for the super Jason. Appreciate it, buddy says 11 and 11 is good considering, uh, who they've played. Any innovation for you, Jim, for being a good baseball mind and person. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, (laughs) standing innovation. That's a very good one. Very good one. By the way, I did not come up, I did not like have this grandiose like light bulb idea thing to say on the radio. I didn't. This wasn't even like my idea. I was just relaying it and giving my thoughts on it. <laughs> like, so I feel like people think it was my idea. I know those people are just trolls, um, but it really wasn't. It was just something that I relayed and gave my opinion on. Said I didn't care. Do it. Hey. If you do it, that's great. I think it's a little cringe, but you know what? To each their own. If you want to do it, do it. Um, but yeah, 11 and 11 is, is, is good considering who they played. You know, looking at their, their, their schedule here, it's not been the easiest of schedules. You know, Giants, even though well, they don't play the Padres, they just suck. St. Louis, Chicago, Milwaukee, the Dodgers, and now Toronto. All really good teams to be 11-11. Absolutely. Yeah, all things considered, who they've played. Um, to be an 11, to be 11 and 11 right now, I think uh, I think it's fine. It's not the best. It's not the worst. How, how they got here might be a little frustrating because they literally, you know, two games this year, it felt it feels like they kind of threw away. Now we don't know what would have happened in the opener in Korea if Jake catches that ball, right? Doesn't go through his glove. But we do know that uh they would have beat the Giants on that Sunday afternoon if Hassan Kim just held on to the ball. Well, we don't really know, but they would have been in the ninth inning with Robert Suarez and the ball in his hand and a two one lead. So this team could be twelve and ten right now instead of eleven and eleven, uh, if Hassan Kim just holds on to the baseball. And if they're twelve and ten then you feel pretty good. As Spicy Mayonnaise says in the chat, the Dodgers are 12 and 10. And they're supposed to be the greatest team of all time. Um, So 
the saying in baseball is this. You win 60 games, you lose 60 games. It's what you do in the rest of the 62 games remaining on your schedule that will make or break your season. Um, unless you're the Oakland A's. But the Oakland A's have been okay this year. Or, I mean, let me rephrase that. Unless you're the Miami Marlins, right? <laughs> but still, every team, more often than not, you might get that outlier like you did last year with the, the A's and I think maybe another team. I don't know. But um, maybe the Rockies. Rarely do you see like nine teams in baseball not at least win 60 games. You know, you might see one or two, but the good teams, some of the best teams in baseball lose 60 games. I would argue that every World Series winner over the last maybe decade have all lost at least 60 games. I might don't don't quote me on that. Hold on. Hold on. John, if you're watching, what are you doing? Because, yes, I, I mess up the math now. 60 and 60 is 120 plus another 62 is 182. I'm an idiot. Oh, you're flying. Oh, okay. So you're watching while flying. All right. Nice of you to join us on the chat. Appreciate that. So, so what? 60, 60, and then 42? There you go. There's the math. See, that's why I need you here. Because I suck at math. <laughs> All right. Let me rephrase that. Everybody lose 60 games. Everybody wins 60 games. It's what you do in the other 42 games that will make or break your season. You want me to join from 34C? Yes. You don't have a private... I mean, yeah, Chad says it. You're not on a private jet. You're Mr. Like Aztec football now. Uncle Teddy didn't get you the private jet? What are you in, like, commercial? College football play-by-play -play broadcasters don't fly commercial? Anyway, I'm surprised you actually have any Wi-Fi on the plane. Did you? But you probably you probably bought Wi-Fi. He bought Wi-Fi. It's coaching. It sucks. Yeah, I know. Are you in the middle seat? You're in the middle seat, huh? And you bought the Wi-Fi. You 100 percent bought the Wi-Fi. There's no shot that you didn't buy the Wi-Fi. You know how I know? Because I would have bought the Wi-Fi, and I did buy the Wi-Fi. So there it is. I know six times th six six times three is 180. It's hard. I'm sorry. When I just say things, I say things. And then I don't have anybody here to like fact check me. <laughs> like the other night I said Hideki Matsui like 150 times. I'm sorry. I meant Yuki Matsui. You bought John says he bought the Wi-Fi, but he hates himself for doing it. Is because you hate yourself that you're watching this right now with the Wi-Fi that you bought? Is that why you hate yourself? That you spent all that money? Like probably 10 bucks. 40, maybe 40, I don't know how much it was, 40, $40 to watch this wrap up show after a 5 1 loss. <laughs> Spicy Mane says, Well, if you count spring training for some teams, it is 175. Yes, I know. I'm an idiot. Sorry. People are going to watch that back and be like, John, or Jim, what the, f what the hell are you talking about? 60 and 60 plus 62 is not 162, you freaking moron. Thank you, Mike. I have been busting my ass. Um, let's go back to some super chats here. Uh, HB, our good buddy, HBBBBVPPBBVJJJJJJ says the uh, Doyers and Giants lost today. I plant, I plant better than X. Okay. Don't know what that means. Are you high right now? I, I drunk. I I plant better than X. I play better than X. Well, actually, he plays better than you because he's on the team and you're not. But uh, thanks for the super, buddy. Appreciate it. I went to college. I went to junior college. <laughs> I went to city college. Play better than next. Yes, that's that's what I got there. That's what I got there. Appreciate that. Um, all right, guys. I mean, there's really not much else to say about this game. 
truly because it sucks. <laughs> it, it, it sucked. It was a not fun game to watch. Hopefully tomorrow night's game is uh, better. 540 first pitch. And it is official. Randy Vasquez will be on the mound starting for the Padres tomorrow um, versus Jose Barrios. Remember him? Oh, no big deal. He's only 3-0 with a 1.05 ERA. It's fine. So, yeah. Big game tomorrow. They're all big. Um, Before we head out of here, thank you to our sponsors over at Underdog Fantasy. Guys, right now, Underdog Fantasy is the hottest, best way to win money uh, by 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 easily just playing higher or lower. It is easy. It's simple. It's fun to do. You can bet little money, like ten bucks, and potentially win big time money, like over two hundred or three hundred dollars, just by picking five correct plays. You can win up to ten times your money, twenty times your money, even a hundred times your money. Um, just go there right now. Download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code Pods Rap P A D S W R A P. Once you do that. Your first one hundred dollars will be your first hundred dollars deposited will be matched by Underdog Fantasy. Um, I was playing in a bunch of games tonight. Fortunately, did not win any, but doesn't mean that uh, you know more opportunities aren't there because they absolutely are. And I have won some big time money in Underdog Fantasy already just by hitting on three picks, and I went over three hundred bucks. You could do the same. You can uh, bet li- a little amount of money to win a big amount of money. And by the way, if you're if you sign up right now on Underdog Fantasy using promo code Pods Wrap, and you get your first hundred dollars deposited matched, you basically get a free one hundred dollars to play with. You can bet free money to win real money. Um, all you have to do is download the Underdog Fantasy app, and when you sign up, use promo code Pods Wrap P A D S W R A P. And you start playing. It's as simple as that. And it's easy. You can do multiple sports. You can do an NBA game mixed with uh, uh, two Major League Baseball games. Or you can do NHL hockey. Or you can do um, a combination of all three. Like, you don't just have to stick to one. You can do multiple. And it keeps you engaged. It's fun. Um, It will piss you off when you don't hit something. But the reward uh, when you do, it could be, uh, you know, a lot of money that you guys win. So again, Underdog Fantasy, download the app right now. Use promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, for your first deposit of $100 matched by us. Um, okay. Anything else tonight? I don't think there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else. Um, yeah. That's it. All right. I know I'm done too. Uh, not really a fun game to talk about. Honestly, it sucked. It wasn't great. All right. We're back tomorrow. No, we're not back tomorrow. It's Saturday. Um, we are back on Sunday night. We're back on Sunday night after the uh, Padres finish up their series with the Blue Jays. Um, if you guys are watching in San Diego, and you guys want to see me and John tomorrow. We'll be at Snapdragon Stadium for the Aztec Fast spring game starting at 11 a.m. Uh, we're broadcasting from 11 to 1. Uh, so come on down, say hi, hang out, watch some football, uh, have some really good food, drink some good uh, drinks, some beer, um, and it's going to be a great day at Snapdragon Stadium. So until then, bye, everybody. Peace out, bye. John, can't believe you bought the Wi-Fi, dude. That's it's really stupid. Why'd you buy the Wi-Fi? They probably have all your like passwords now. Oh, well, that sucks. Peace out, bye, everybody.